What if I told you that you're probably wasting three hours every single day without even realizing it? I recently discovered that I spend nearly half of my workday at over 30 hours just on communication. That's WhatsApp, Slack, Microsoft Teams, emails, and I had absolutely no idea until I started using the timing app. And honestly, seeing these numbers has completely changed how I think about my entire workflow. Welcome back to the Feel Productive channel. My name's Ez. Let's get into it. So I've been using the timing app on my Mac for the last few weeks, and it's basically this automatic time tracking app that runs in the background and shows you exactly where your time goes every single day. And the insights I've discovered about my own work habits have been genuinely eye-opening. To be honest, some of them have been a little bit uncomfortable. There's this quote from Tiago Forte that really resonates with me. Your attention is one of your most precious resources. And honestly, before using timing, I had no idea where my attention was actually going. Looking at my stats from the last week, I worked 69 hours and eight minutes. And that's about nine hours and 52 minutes per day. But my productivity score was only like 50, 51%. And I mean, that was a wake up call. So timing monitors which apps you're using, which websites you're visiting, which documents you're working on, and it even tracks the full file paths and URLs and you can also allow it to take the screen share data from your iPhone so it will know everything you're doing on your phone as well. Then it organizes all of that data into this really visual, easy to understand kind of dashboard. And the keyword here is automatic. You're not starting and stopping timers. You're not manually logging your time. It just works in the background. But if you do want to stop or pause the timer, let's say, you can also do that whenever you like. And you can add offline work time that wasn't tracked on the Mac. You can easily enter it manually. I'll show you exactly how to do that later in this video. None of your data gets sent to the cloud unless you specifically choose to opt into the sync in order to access the web app. Private browsing tabs are automatically excluded from tracking and you can add any activities to an exclusion list to prevent them from being tracked altogether. So you have complete control over what gets tracked and what doesn't. And tracking is important because you know, you can't manage what you can't measure. So when you first open timing, you're greeted with this really clean dashboard that breaks down your day into categories. First thing I noted was obviously the communication and just how much time is dedicated to communicating on my laptop, but also other stuff like I spent a ton of time web browsing, but barely any time doing the things that I thought I was doing. So three hours and nine or 10 minutes on YouTube work is insane in a week. I thought I was spending way longer than that. 40 minutes on reading and writing and just over an hour combined on ChatGPT and Claude. The numbers don't lie, but I just felt like something was wrong. So the dashboard shows you pie charts, bar graphs, and timelines that visualize exactly how you spent your time. And you can see it by day, by week, by month, or even create custom date ranges. And this is really what shocked me was actually seeing my week and my day broken down and drilled down into hour by hour what I've been doing. And the data told me a completely different story to the story I was telling myself. I'm basically a full-time communicator who occasionally makes YouTube videos at this point. Timing also has AI powered insights that automatically transform all that raw activity data into actionable summaries. So instead of just seeing you spent three hours in Chrome, the AI groups related activities together and highlights key topics. So it might say something like three hours on client research and email correspondence for a project. It basically does the hard work of making sense of your data for you. One of the standout features is how timing automatically categorizes your activity. So it comes with pre-built categories like communication, design, development, writing, social media, that kind of stuff. But the clever bit is it learns as it goes. So if you're using Figma, it automatically knows that's design work. If you're using Final Cut Pro or DaVinci Resolve, that's video editing. And if you're scrolling through Twitter, well, that's social media. The timeline view is genuinely fascinating. It's where you get the minute by minute breakdown of your entire day. Looking at my most active hours, I'm absolutely slammed between 9 a.m. and 6 p.m., probably like a lot of you. And that's when, you know, the bars are sky high. But I also noticed something interesting, which is 
I'm checking WhatsApp constantly throughout the day. I spend over 15 hours a week just communicating on WhatsApp and that's nearly two and a half hours per day. And honestly, most of that is probably me context switching between work and personal messages and that's destroying my focus. I also spend about an hour and 30 minutes on TikTok during work hours. Not proud of that one, but at least now I know. And sometimes it helps to get a little bit of light relief, but I didn't realize it was an hour and a half every single day. The timeline view, by the way, also shows your calendar events. So you can integrate your calendars, be it your native Mac calendars or Google or Outlook calendars into this as well. And this works really well because you can click a button and it will automatically add that meeting. It'll absorb it into the timing calendar to account for the time that you had. By the way, if you're interested in trying timing for yourself, I have a 20% off discount code down in the description. There's a free trial as well if you just wanna give it a go for 30 days, which I think is really generous. And I highly, highly recommend at least trying it for a week and see what you discover. And by the way, be sure to like and subscribe for more tech and productivity content. I know you want to. So timing also lets you mark certain apps and websites as either productive or distracting time and assign productivity scores to your projects. Then it shows you a productivity score for your day, which you can even display in your max menu bar for real-time feedback. So remember when I said my productivity score was like 50, 51%, that means nearly half of my time is spent on things timing considers unproductive or distracting. Now I'm not a massive fan of reducing your work down to just a single score, but seeing that number there staring back at me in the face is a powerful motivator to change my habits. Looking at my most productive weekdays, I can see that Fridays and Saturdays are when I actually get stuff done. The green bars are much higher. The rest of the week is a sea of red and yellow, so that's not great. It also automatically detects when you've stopped using your Mac and can pause tracking accordingly. And when you return to your desk, it sort of picks it up again. Oh, you can also export your data in pretty much any format from Excel to CSV, PDF, even JSON, and choose different types of formats like timesheets if you're a freelancer. And they look really professional, gives you all the detail you need, like which apps you used, which documents you worked on, etc. So here's the thing about automatic time tracking, right? It forces you to confront some uncomfortable truths about how you actually work, which to be honest, maybe in the back of my mind, I already knew, but just seeing the numbers there and seeing it in a report just sort of slaps you in the face. To see that I spend over half my workday communicating has made me reassess how I should be working. So if I wanna go deep, if I wanna do deep work, I wanna do creative work, I need to actively protect my time. I also discovered some interesting patterns. So Monday, I'm absolutely slammed. It's never a good day to try and do anything new because it seems to be one of my busiest days. Lunch times are never relaxing. I always seem to be busier during my lunch break. And I'm clearly spending not enough time doing YouTube content related stuff. And that needs to change if I'm going to grow this channel. So knowing all of this has helped me restructure my day. I now try to batch my communication time into specific blocks rather than letting it bleed into everything that I do. My job could just be full-time communication, honestly, if I let it be but that's not what I want to be doing with my time. Some people might feel uncomfortable with an app basically tracking everything that they do on their computer and on their phone, and I get it, it's a bit big brotherish. but like I said earlier, all your data stays local on your Mac unless you choose for it not to. So timing offers a free 30-day trial, like I said, which is pretty generous and gives you plenty of time to really test it out properly. If you're looking at the subscription model, it's about nine pounds a month if you pay annually. And if you're going to genuinely use those insights to continuously improve your productivity, then nine pounds a month is absolutely nothing. The app itself is absolutely wonderful. It's a native Mac app, so I've had no issues with it. It hasn't slowed my computer down in any way, and it just works seamlessly. I am pleased to say that this week, having made some tweaks and changes and blocked out time in my calendar and been a bit more intentional with how I use my time, my productivity score this week has definitely improved. And if you want to see some more ways in which I save about two and a half hours a day using some cool tech and cool apps, I'll leave a link to that video at the end of this one. I'll see you there.